Dan Rutherford, the polls show you running last, and in recent debates you've not been the focus of discussion and are perceived by many, too, at this point to be a non-factor. Has there been any pressure on you to drop out of the race? Well, if I was a non-factor, I wouldn't show up here and spend my evening with you, Phil. The, um, <clears throat> uh, the fact of the matter is that I still have a strong belief. I have a very strong belief what Illinois should be. And if it, my, my being here helps keep these gentlemen a little bit more focused on what I believe Illinois should be, I'm going to do it. With regards to my supporters out there that have been helpful and they want to see us go through and advocate those things, I'm going to continue to do that. And i got to be candid with you. I mean, I've had a pretty rough six weeks. There's not one person out here in this audience that doesn't know how bad my six weeks have been. Describe what it's been like. It hasn't been good. And, is, <laughs> and with that regard, I'll tell you candidly, too, it's, it's a part of standing up, being strong, looking you in the eye, and looking the cameras in the eye about where I see Illinois wanting to be. And that's the kind of character that I want to leave this race with. Uh, and we have a viewer who posted this question for Bruce Rauner on our website. And the question is, explain the difference between citizens joining together via their union affiliation to gain access and influence legislation or other governmental policy, an activity he describes as, quote, bribery, and wealthy individuals supporting political action committees or directly supporting candidates in order to gain access? Kind of a variation on the first question I asked you. Yeah, it's a difference of being, uh, gaining access versus influencing decision about a special financial arrangement. Government union bosses, government union bosses, and it's not different from the private sector. Private sector unions, they're out there competing in the marketplace, and they have uh, a countervailing force. Um, public sector unions, there's no countervailing force. They are organized against the public good. Even Franklin Roosevelt, the most powerful Democratic president and the most pro-union president in American history, was concerned and was against government union power because he said it's organized against the public good. When government union power can influence politicians in the contract negotiations for pensions, for pay scales, for health care, it's a direct financial incentive on, uh, uh, in effect, is a bribe with someone to cross the negotiating right, quick, table. Uh, Mr. Rauner, you've been asked several times about how your daughter got into patent prep, but the larger question might be, why would your family take a spot in a Chicago selective enrollment school when, living in Winnetka, she already had a spot at New Trier, one of the best high schools in the country. We'd, we'd uh, bought in a condo, bought some um, a home downtown. We're living downtown uh, for the majority of our time, back and forth with Winnetka. And uh, my wife had taken over a new job as CEO of an organization. And we were looking at uh, school options. And uh, Walter Payton was a great school. Um, she applied and uh, highly qualified, straight A's, perfect um, test scores, 100%. She had but the she option had... of staying in Winnetka. Sure. Yes. Sure, absolutely. Here's, here's the, the important issue. My wife and I have been committed to school reform in Chicago for decades. And both with our time and our financial resources, we believe all parents should be entitled to school choice. And we've been driving that through charter schools, vouchers, merit pay for great teachers. We're very engaged in the Chicago public schools. And we want every parent in Chicago to have school choice. Speaking of driving, you have nine houses. What address is on your driver's license? <laughs> uh, uh, Winnetka. Winnetka? Winnetka, Illinois. OK, what is that? If you're living in, where do you live? That's our primary residence. Where we are, sometimes we're downtown in Chicago. Sometimes we're in Winnetka. Well, if your primary residence is, is still in Winnetka, then that raises that raises the question about why the why your daughter went to school. It, it would make sense, I suppose, that if you're living in Chicago, you'd want your daughter to go to a Chicago school. If you were living in Winnetka, how come? Yeah. Well, we moved back to Winnetka a year and a half ago for our primary activities, and and uh, we still own our home in Chicago. We still there a lot. Um, Mr. Brady, you recently uh, you recently said that you're open to letting, speaking of schools, you're open to letting school officials decide whether creationism should be taught in the classrooms. What's your thinking behind that? Well, I, I think knowledge is power, and we ought to give people the opportunity uh, from a literary standpoint or whatever to teach various things. Including creation. Do you believe in evolution? I believe in both creation and evolution. How about the rest of you? You believe in evolution? Uh, yes. I believe in both. You believe in both? I believe they both uh, can, can be together and subsist together. Scientists would say no. Scientists do not believe Adam and Eve rode dinosaurs to church. Well, I believe that uh, the two do go hand in glove, although I don't think you sit there and teach creationism in the public school classroom. Dan, Dan Rutherford, do you believe in evolution? Yes. But before you go off that, it depends on how you define it. And I think these gentlemen talking about, about the way that they are, I don't have a conflict at all with that. Was there an Adam and Eve, and how was Adam and Eve, and what did they look like, and how did they evolve, and what did they become? 
That's how I look at it. Looking at uh, looking at your political life, your your campaign, um, biggest regret, Dan Rutherford. <laughs> how much time do you have? Um, you know, I you know what I I think um, I think it was probably bringing in people uh, into places of trust and confidence and finding that uh, I did not make a good selection. By the way, taxpayers did pay the $27,000 for that investigation. You're not releasing it. You're saying it's on the advice of counsel. Would you ever consider repaying taxpayers that $27,000? If this was a suit that wasn't dealing with the Office of the State Treasurer, yes, but this is dealing with the Office of Illinois State Treasurer, Phil. All right. Kirk Dillard, your biggest regret politically or in this campaign? When my county board chairman, Bob Schillerstrom, dropped out of the governor's race in 2010, should have gone into court, got a court order to take him off all the computerized ballots, and I'd be the governor today. I assume all of you would support the party's nominee, but if you had to vote for someone other than yourself, who would that be? And please, please name someone. Don't dance around it. Bill Brady. I haven't thought about it. I'm going to win. Oh, but, but that, that, you're dancing, and you're a good dancer. <laughs> you're right. All right. Dan Rutherford. <laughs> I'd vote for Steve Kim, my lieutenant governor. <laughs> Kurt Dillard. I'd vote for Dan Rutherford, just like I told you four years ago I would have voted for Jim Ryan. I, if, if I'm going to answer this, I'm going to say Bill Brady. All right. Very interesting. You sure you don't want to reconsider? <laughs> I'm going to take Bruce's endorsement. <laughs>